My name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 10. Lesson number 10, it says 3010, 3 indicates the fact that we are in the third edition. If you're interested in watching the original solutions, the same exact problems that we're going to do today are the exact same problems that appeared in the first and the second edition. If you're interested in watching the original solutions, which are done a little bit of a slower pace and, and, and in a little bit more in depth, you will find the solutions of the problems on page number 35 and 36. Not page number, rather. Day 35 and day 36. Just type in GRE Math, day 35 and day 36. You will find the same problems. We are on page number 160. I hope that you have the book in front of you. It's very important because I'm not going to read the whole problem to you. So we have two machines here, machine R and machine S. We are told that machine R can do a job in 30 minutes. The job they're describing, the job they're, what, they're, what I'm calling job is what they're calling X units. So it tells, it tells us that machine R can produce X units in 30 minutes and machine, machine S can produce the same X unit in 48 minutes and I'm just instead of X unit I'm just calling it a job. Do you understand? The question simply is how many jobs A can do in 3 hours given the fact that it takes 30 minutes for it to do a job and versus how many jobs S can do in 4 hours. Let's get going shall we? Let's get going. It's a very straightforward thing here. First part, so let's not worry about this X unit. We understand that X unit is what we're calling the job. You understand? Uh, three hours, three hours, this is very straightforward because he takes 30 minutes. So in half an hour, he does one job. In one job in half an hour, obviously he's going to do two jobs in, in one hour and six jobs in three hours. I don't know why I'm explaining all this thing. Obviously, if you're, if you're doing a job in half an hour, in one hour you're going to do two jobs, and in three hours you're going to do six jobs. So that's very straightforward here. This part is very simple. What about this guy? Well, there are two ways we can go about it. One way is to figure out how long it's going to take him to do six jobs. Let's find that out, shall we? It takes 48 hours to do the job. If he wants to do six jobs, he's going to end up six times 48 minutes. Six times 48 minutes. Let's pretend that 48 is 50. 6 times 50, let's pretend we are approximating now. 6 times 48 minutes is how long it's going to take, which is approximately 6 times 50, which is 300 minutes. 300 minutes, which is 5 hours. He doesn't have 5 hours, he only has 4 hours. So obviously, the number of jobs that he can do in 4 hours is going to be less than the number of jobs the other guy can do in 3 hours. Because in order for him to do the same number of jobs, in order for him to do 6 jobs, in order for him to do six job, he will need six times 48 minutes. He doesn't have six times 48 minutes. Six times 48 minutes is almost 300 minutes. He doesn't have five hours, he only has four hours. We don't know how much he can do in four hours, but he cannot do six job because for that he needs almost five hours. So that's one way of doing it. The answer is A. Another way, to, another way is to actually just do it out. It only takes a little bit of time. So he takes 48 minutes, he has four hours, we are told. Four hours is four times 60. 4 times 60 minutes he has, and he takes 48 minutes per job, as you can see, minutes are going to cancel out, the job is going to end up on the top, let's figure out what that is, we see 48 at the bottom, we see 4 at the top, let's divide top and bottom by 4, 4 is going to go away, 4 has 1 4 and 8 has 2 4, in other words 48 divided by 4 is 12, we see 12 at the bottom and we see 60 at the top, let's divide top and bottom by 12, there you go, he's going to do 5 jobs, and of course, this guy can do six jobs, so the answer is A. Answer is A. Let's move on to something else, okay? Let's move on to the next problem. There is actually another little tricky way, if you want to, if you're interested. The other guy, we're talking about the second guy, the column B. We're talking about the column B guy, and we were told that he has four hours, okay? This is just a quick and dirty way. Four hours. Let's divide up the four hours. Let's divide up the four hours into 60 minutes, 60 minutes, 60 minutes, and 60 minutes. And this is something you have to do it in your mind, not, not on a piece of paper. You just have to imagine it in your mind, which is made up of 48 plus 12, 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 48 plus 12. But there you go, it's very straightforward. 
one jobs, two jobs, three jobs, four jobs, and 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 is another job. He can do only five jobs. The other guy can do six jobs. Number two, on the same page. Problem number two, on the same page. I'm going to put it on the blackboard. I'm going to put it on the blackboard. <coughs> so we have list X and list Y. We have observations and we have frequencies. We need all of this thing, otherwise I won't do it. And we have one, two, three, and five. And we are told that one appears ten times. We are told that two appears twenty times. We have twenty twos. We have eighteen threes and twelve. 5 and you can see there 10 plus 20 is 30, 30 plus 10 is 40. See, so this is what I'm doing here 10 plus 20 is 30, 30 plus 10 is 40, 40 plus 10 is 50, and 8 plus 2 is 60. So there are 60 observations. Even though we didn't have to do that, they tell you there are 60 observations. And similarly, other list also has 60 observations, and that's the important, that is the most crucial part in this problem. Otherwise, we will not be able to do what we are about to do. They have to have, the two lists have to have the same number of observations. Otherwise, what we're going to do in this problem, we will not be able to do. List Y, we are told, again, we have the observations here, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We, have, we are told that we have 24 sixes, we have 17 sevens, we have 10 eights and 9. And again, if you were to add them up very quickly, you will see, you will see that it also adds up to 60. Okay, let's do it together, shall we? We have, we have 20, 30, 40, and then 4 plus 7 is 11, so that's 50, 51, 51, and 9 is 60. We have 60 observations. That's very important that the number of observations are the same. Okay, what's going on here then? Let's carry on. We are further told that the average in the first list is 27, or 2.7 rather. The average of the first list uh, couldn't, couldn't possibly be 27 because the highest is 5. Average is 2.7. Let's make a note of it here. We just call it average of list 1. Average of list 1 is 27. And the average of list 2 we are told, or rather 2.7. And the average of list 2 we are told is 7.1. Which makes sense because they go from 6, 7, 8, 9. The, the ordinary average, simple average, not the weighted average, simple average would have been 7.5. Because 6, 7, 8, and 9, we would have taken the average of those two. The, the simple average of 6, 7, 8, and 9 is 7.5. But it's 7.1 is lower than uh, the ordinary average because we have more of the lower observations. We have 24 or 6, we have 24 sixes, we have 17 sevens, but only 10, 8, and 9. That's why it's lower than the ordinary average. Anyway, enough of the talk. The question is, so then what we do is, then we, what we do is, we make a list Z. Make list Z, because they're calling this one list X and list Y. We make a list Z, which is made up of, which is made up of two lists, two lists put together. Are you with me? It says list Z is made up of all 120 observations put together. And the question is very straightforward. The question simply is, which one is bigger, the, the average? Or the median. I need all of this thing so I can erase this thing. So I'm going to erase all of this thing. So we have a list Z. Keep that in mind. And keep also in mind that the average is 2.7 and 7.1 and they both have 60 observations. Okay, because I need the room. I don't want to erase the top part. Column A, we are asked to find the average of list Z versus column B, where we are asked to com com compare it with the median of list Z. What we notice is that finding the median, finding the median is a piece of cake. Median is very easy to find out. Median is simply the median, because there are 60 observations here and 60 observations here, the median is simply going to be the average of the 60th observation and the 61st observation. It's going to be the average of those two observations. We have 10 ones, 22s, 18 threes, and 12 fives. So the 60th observation, if you make a list in, in, in order, 
then at the end of the list we're going to have we see 12 observations of 5 and therefore the 60th observation is 5. Similarly the 61st observation, the first observation in this list is 6 because there are 24 of those. So it's just 5 plus 6 divided by 2. Median is very straightforward. The median of this guy is 5.5. Let's make a note here, 5.5. That is very straightforward. The tricky part is to figure out the average of the two lists combined. So let's do that, okay? Watch what happens. The average of the two lists combined. We know the average of the first list is 2.7. We know the average of the first, point is, first list is 2.7. And we also know there are 60 of them. We also know that the average of the second list is 7.1. And we also know that there are 6 of them. There are 6 of them. And how many total observation? Total observation we have is 120. They tell us that 60 plus 60. 120. Okay, watch what happens. 60 plus 60. Watch what happens. We have a 60 here. We have a 60 here. And we have a 60 here. We can take out 60 as a common factor. Let's take it out as a common factor. Let's take it out as a common factor. So we have 60 times 2.7 plus 7.1. And what do we have at the bottom? On the bottom we have 60 plus 60, which is same as 2 times 60. And what do we suppose is going to happen? I'm going to write the other way around. I'm going to write the other way around for a reason. Instead of writing 2 times 60, I'm going to write it as 60 times 2. 60 times 2. And what do you suppose is going to happen? We see 60 on the top, 60 on the bottom. 60 cancels out. 60 cancels out. And what do we end up finding? What we end up finding is that as long as the number of observations are the same, there are 60 observations here, there are 60 observations here, as long as the observations, as, as, as long as the number of observations are the same, then the average of the two lists put together is simply, is simply the average of the two average, oh sorry, that's not what I meant to erase, is simply, the, it, it, it destroys the dramatic effect, you see, I just ruined the whole thing, is simply the average of the two averages. Average of the first list is 2.7, average of the second list is 7.1. Just take the average, if you add them up and divide by 2, we're taking the average of the two averages. As long as the number of observations in the two lists are the same, the overall average of the list that we put, that we have, that is put together, uh, list Z, which is made up of the two lists put together, then the average of all the observations put together is simply the average of the two averages. Average. That's it. You're done. Whatever that answer happens to be. This is 5.5 and a half. That's very straightforward. Is 2 plus 7 is 9. It's 9.8. and 0 0.1. 9.8. 9.8 divided by 2. And of course, so this part, the average of Z is 9.2. 9.8 rather. Divided by 2. And of course, that's less than 5. Something less than 5, obviously, is going to be less than 5 and a half. 5.5 is bigger than five, something less than 5. The answer is B. Now, as far as, the problem, as far as the problem is concerned, we are done. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. Now we're going to do the same thing algebraically. Okay, Let's do it algebraically. Watch what happens. We're going to do the same thing algebraically. To understand that it is always the case that the average of the two lists is going to be simply the average of the two averages as long as they have the same number of observations. The top number of observations are their weights, you see. If they have different number of observations, then we have to take the weighted average. We can't take a simple average. This is a simple average. Why? Because here, you see, we have n number of observations. Let's pretend we have n number of observations in the first list. The average of the first list is, let's call it A subscript 1, average of the first list. We have n number of observations in the second list, and let's call it the average of the second list is a subscript 2. So that is the sum of all the observations put together. And we divide by the total number of observations, which is n plus n. And what are we going to find? Same as before. n is going to come out as a common factor. n, n is going to come out as a common factor. n comes out as a common factor. And what we are left here is the average of the first list plus the average of the second list right here average of the first list and the average of the second list divided by 2 times n, 2 times n and let's write that as let's write that as 
n times 2 again for the same dramatic reason and this time I won't mess it up I will erase it properly so what happens to you suppose what happens is that the number of observations however many observations we have in each list plays no role because it drops out at the end as long as we have the same number of observations in both because that's what allows us to take it out as a common factor if these values were different we would not have been able to take them out as a common factor and this would not have been 2 times n because they are same, same n plus n it becomes 2n and because they are same we can take it out and it, it drops out it plays no role how many, how many observations we have in one list and how many observations we have in second list plays no role as long as they are equal so instead of 20 had they, if they had told us that there are 20,000 observations in the list 1 with the average of with the average of I forget what the average with the average of 2.7 and there are 20,000 observations in list B with the average of 7.1 what's going to be the average if we put the two lists together with the 40,000 observations well the answer is the average is going to be the average of the two averages right here whatever that is you see so the n drops out and what we find at the end that the average is simply the average of the two averages that's it this is where I'm going to stop for today Uh, I did want to do something else. Just give me a second. I'm going to look very quickly as to how much time has gone by. We are we are 17 minutes into it. Let's let's do something else. Let's let's do something else. If only if you're interested. As far as the two problems are concerned, we are done. This is something extra. And this has to do with an important topic that appears that appears on the GRE on a consistent basis, on a consistent basis, on a regular basis, and that is called the work time problems. And if you're interested in getting some more practice, you can watch a series, there is a series on my channel called Basic Math, day 111 to 115, and if you're getting bored right now, you can, you can stop obviously, but you will find something worthwhile if you, if you trust me. 131 to 135, which are medium questions, these are easy, and finally 196 to 200. There are 200 videos in that series called basic math and when I say basic math I mean basic math it starts out with something very simple with the with the timetables and just uh, goes on in the in the, in the in different topics and work time problems is what I did there in the series just type in basic math nothing else just basic math day 111 and watch that video as I said the first five are easy the next five are medium the last five are hard here is a work time problem here's a work time problem that we just did a little while ago the first problem that we did was a work time problem I'm going to again very quickly put it in the blackboard and then I'm going to give you the answer problem. So we have two machines. We are told that uh, A can do A can do A can do a job in 30 minutes. We are further told B can do a job in 48 minutes. The question is how long how long would they take? working together at their simultaneous speed, this is how the exam is going to say, I'm not going to write on all of this blackboard, all of that in the blackboard, how long will they take working simultaneously at their, at their, as, as, at their uh, corresponding speeds to finish the job, how long together, how long will they take to do the job together, here are the answer choices, what I want you to do is A, B, C, D and E what I want you to do is work on this problem work on this problem and in the next video we will do it together alright? we'll make it interesting work on it together, work on it yourself oh, it should say I should, it should say the exam, in the exam it's not going to say how long how long will they take it together, it's say approximately how long I forgot, that's a very important part the question is going to say approximately how long, how many minutes are they, approximately how many minutes are they going to take to finish the job together. And these are minutes, these are all in minutes. Because this is 48 minutes, the first guy takes 30 minutes, the second guy takes 48 minutes, the same problem that we just finished a little while ago. Do it, work on it as I said uh, in the next video.
We're going to start out with this. I'm not going to erase this thing. We're going to start out with this. We'll finish this up first. Even though the handwriting is quite atrocious, but you, you get it. This is 30 minutes. This is 48 minutes. The problem that we just finished. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.